Hello, in my last couple of videos, I was working on a project like this and it has several potentiometers on it. So I talked a lot about these and these you can turn by hand, but sometimes, especially here when there's lots of other components in the way, it can get kind of difficult to get my fingers in there. Um, using, I could use a um, screwdriver, Sometimes there's problems with that. This plastic's not too hard, this white plastic, so you can strip over time. And then if you press in there, that can actually change the value. And then when you let go, it goes back to, you know, whatever value it should be for the position that you have. So it becomes kind of a problem using a screwdriver or maybe using your fingertips. So I made some knobs. And uh, once I got the sizing of the fit for this, this white plastic then you know i tried different versions so uh this was sort of like my one of my originals and uh it's in black but it's got a very small pointer uh, that might be good if you have lots of things crowding around on the circuit board then you don't want something sticking out too much but it is harder to see so here's a, a knob with a, a bigger pointer this this one here has a window See, this one does too. So you can actually see the number that's on the uh, potentiometer on there. So if you want to see, be able to see how, what value of potentiometer you have on there, then the window would allow that. This is my big knob. This is my wide knob with a window. Okay. This is the blade top. So this one's my favorite, actually. This is, is the easiest one to turn. Uh, a lot of these I will print upside down. You don't need any support material, at least for my uh, 3D printer. This one, obviously, I print that way. Problem um, with printing it standing up like this is sometimes the that first layer there can kind of expand, and so then it might not fit so well into your potentiometer. So you might need a little knife and to kind of work the edges away. Um, another thing too is it's actually quite a t quite tight fit, um, which is done on purpose. But if it's really tight fit putting it on, then it might not come off. Okay, and and the potentiometer might break when you try to take it off so that might be something to consider okay you can glue them but like i said it's a pretty tight fit so um you may not need glue okay um, i did want to show you what i meant by like problems with the screwdriver so just to kind of show you and so so yeah like part of the reason why i think these work well so here's a move it back here five volt power supply so I'm gonna plug that in okay and then let's get so here this one the blue one is to ground the red one is to the five volts it's not on yet but let me plug this in okay so we can kind of see that potentiometer is in there so this leg here is on this side not connected to anything right now don't need anything for this demo but uh, let me turn my multimeter on voltage turn this on so here that leads to the multimeter let me stick that in ground okay so if I just stick this here into the red so it should be about five volts so that is and then this is kind of crooked let's stick this in on this side so now the multimeter is reading sort of the center pin of the potentiometer right and so i can kind of turn it by hand but if you're clumsy like me you might pull something else out of the breadboard um, and it's not as easy to turn so then i can use a screwdriver um, but when i stick this in there like it can change the value i haven't even turned yet and that's not so dramatic sometimes it's quite dramatic and then if i turn didn't shift too much sometimes though i find that it, it it shifts so maybe it's i'm pressing too hard with the screwdriver um but yeah i, I i've just it has, it has not always been easy so then if i take so this is a one of the, the big knob let me just turn this off a second so actually let me get a different one um well, here, let me take one of these. 
Okay, so there's the bottom. Uh, it is a tight fit, so you may actually want to put it on before sticking it into the breadboard. So why don't I do that? Because you might just squash the pins. Okay, so there you go. So that goes in there. You can kind of, I don't know if you saw, but you can see that I had used a knife to kind of clean up the edges on the underside there. Let's turn the power supply back on. It does move around a bit, so I, you could have capacitors in, in this circuit. It might stabilize that a little better, but, but it is then very easy to turn using the knob. Okay. So, and like I said, there are uh, different versions depending on, you know, what you want to try. So the last thing I want to show you is this version here. It has a depression inside and there is a slot. So there's a slot right there. And so these were meant to be knobs that can accept a 3D printed label. So I initially printed off a whole bunch and some of them didn't work. So they're like, I think that's supposed to say coarse and that's supposed to say bright for brightness. And I think that's I'm supposed to say volt or something. I don't know. It, it, uh, because of the resolution and my 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle, those didn't work out so well. Some of them did sort of work. So this one says fine. This one just has a single letter S for maybe sensitivity or something. So those worked well. Um, I did try to contact the, the 3D printing manufacturer, 3D printer manufacturer, AnchorMake. Um, they gave me some general advice about printing smaller things. Um, and I also used a 0 0.2 millimeter nozzle. So some of these came out better. That's just coarse. That's just fine. So like if you have a a coarse adjustment, a fine adjustment, like two potentiometers in a uh, series. And this one is, let's say, whoop, like this. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so like this here, if you remember this, this one is uh, not the same type. I'm still waiting for that. But if this was 100,000 ohms and this is 10,000 ohms, then this would make big changes with small turns smaller change to a small turn so this would be more coarse and this would be more fine so that was the thinking behind that and so um, here it actually says coarse this one says c r s e just to try to make less letters that would be bigger and then this one says fine so for example now you could glue this but uh they just popped in there uh, some are tight fit this one is not so this one would need to be glued but that you could make sure it sticks into the slot. Sorry, my hand's in the way. But make sure it fits in the slot. Okay. And then that would be a labeled knob with potentiometer. Okay. So anyways, um, I will put up a bunch of these files. I, I'm going to keep these separate than, than the other kinds that I made. Uh, so this will be like a remix. So I'll have to post that next on printables. Um, but uh, yeah, the the files for the original ones, the final printables, and then these will be a remix. Uh, and I'll even have a blank label. So you, I think with most Slicer software, you can put your own letters on there. So, so maybe you can play around in and figure out something there. Okay, so thank you for watching. Uh, go to printables, have a look, play around, see what works. Okay, thanks for watching.